I think that the, the problem in Marillion was we became we became a really big band. Right, right. And we were we were about to go into that Super League, you know. Mm. And I wasn't enjoying it. You know, I mean, you know, Why not? I, I I just didn't enjoy it. I mean, I was playing the Ahoy. And you know, you were going in the Ahoy, it was a huge cavern, and you know, you did the sound check, you could see all these seats in front of you, right? Mm. And then um but when the people came in, you couldn't see them. You know, because when you walked on stage, you had two super troopers in your face all the time. You couldn't see further than the further than ten meters, right? Mm. And I'm I like the communication with an audience. I mean, my favorite tour out of everything I've done was the Fishheads Club tour. Okay. Acoustic, playing to three hundred people, four hundred people, and you could talk to them. You could you could have conversations. When you're playing the Ahoy, when somebody from five meters out shouts something funny and you answer with something funny, the people at the back only hear one side of that conversation. Mm. The band were playing exactly the same set every night. It was the same solos, you know. And I right. walk up there, and you know, you, I was, I was like just going on and performing for two hours, and that wasn't what I liked, you know. Mm. And then I'm coming off stage, and then I'm having to shake hands and glad hands. A lot of people that I didn't really want to meet, you know, and I've, and they're all, they're all drinking the wine and eating the food that were paid for by that gig. And then there were so many people that were making a lot of money off that band, and yet the mm. band were not. You know, we were still going back home at the end of the tour going, how do we pay our mortgages? Mm. And we're playing at 12,000 people a night. We were badly, badly managed, you know? Okay. And, I, and I, I didn't get into the music business for money. That was not what drives me. I mean, now we have a very small, you know, a very small outfit here, right? Mm. And, you know, my, like I said, my wife runs the mail order operation. You know, I come in, I can sign things, da, da, da. And it's, we handle it and we can make a living. You know, our most expense, most of our money, you know, if we, you know, our big spends go in the garden. I'm looking at a major raised bed project at the end of the year. Right. You know, the biggest amount of money I've spent in the last the last month was to buy new season tickets from a football club, the Bernie right. Football in Edinburgh, because their players need the money. And it's like, you know, and it's like, yeah, we'll buy the season tickets early to help the club. You know, I don't have security. I don't have a Mustang in the drive. I don't have a villa in France. I don't have a you know a hole up in Barbados or whatever. Mm. This is what we have. We have a home. We have a garden, and that's and I like it like that. It's small and it's simple, and I enjoy it. With Marillion, it became too complicated, you know. Right. And, the dem- and the demands on my my personal life, the demands on my private life, were high. It was detrimental to my health, and I mm. left Marillion after making what I thought was the best album we made was Clutch and Straws. Mm. And clutching at straws, you know, I mean, I gave a, a character called Torch and I went, yeah, Torch is the character of the album. Torch was just a, a very loose construct for an excuse mm. for what I was doing at the time. And, it, you know, I was not an alcoholic and I was not a drug addict, although some people tried to portray that because right. they, they had an agenda. Right. Yeah. And it was like. But with me, it was like I, it was bad for my health. I, you know, the, the the other four guys that I'd come up with that we'd, we'd made everything happen with, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were strangers to each other now. Everybody was looking after themselves. There was no gang mentality, and I missed that. You know, and I and I and I hated working with committees. You know, a committee is just you know when you take a great idea with a lot of energy in it and you put it into a committee. By the time that idea sees maybe. The light of day, the energy's gone out of it. It's been changed, you know. Compromise, yeah, you have to compromise to some degree, but you know, it was like there was too many egos involved, you know. And I just went, I can't, I can't deal with this anymore, and I left it. And I went through a period where I tried to duplicate that in my own way, and it mm-hmm. didn't work. And you know, and then I realised what made me happy, right? And this makes me happy, you know. I like that, to be, you know, I'm talking to you. If I was in Marillion, it was like, you know, we'd have 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> right. And it's like, you know, we can do what the hell we want here. And, right. you know, and it's the same way, in the same way as my album, if I was with a major record company, I would be under incredible pressure, as Marillion were. Marillion were under a lot of pressure after mm. with, after clutching. We want another Kaylee. We want another Incommunicado. We want another Lavender, you know? And uh, I didn't like that. You know, I didn't, you know, I write what I want to write. And I do what I want to do, you know, mm-hmm. and I've got nobody telling me you can't do this. 